Hi there. How are you doing today? As we engage in this conversation about community and how it relates to empathy and human connection, I wanted to share some things that I learned through my online teaching. In 2007, I made the move from using all text-based discussions to voice or video discussions blended with text discussions. So again, I went from a purely text environment to an environment where students were sometimes using text-based asynchronous discussions and sometimes speaking either through voice or video. I made that change actually because I was looking for an image-centric learning environment. I was teaching art history at the time, which I realized is worlds apart from STEM. My intention in telling you this is that I made the choice for pedagogical reasons, but what I learned through my student feedback was so much more than I expected. And that's what I want to share with you here. I asked my students if the voice and video comments that I left for them increased the sense that I was present in their learning experience. And their responses were nearly unanimous. 94% of them strongly agreed or agreed that hearing my voice increased my presence in their learning. And 98% of them felt that way about my video comments. I also began to probe about community and I asked students if the voice and video comments contribute to establishing a sense of community in the class. 80% of students strongly agreed or agreed that they did. But building community wasn't just about their ability to hear me. It was their ability to hear each other that really mattered to them. One student even said, I actually recognized a classmate at my children's Taekwondo class because of the sound of her voice. And another student said, I felt more connected to my peers and as a result, more invested in the class. While I was receiving great feedback about the voice and video comments, not many students were willing to do it. In fact, only 25% of my students on average chose voice or video over text. So I made a change. I changed that first icebreaker from a written discussion into a voice or video discussion. And I also required my students to use voice or video to the extent possible. I was very present responding to every student comment that first time and really supporting and encouraging their work. After that, I gave students a choice to choose the method that they preferred. After making that change, I asked my students what their preferred commenting method was, and the majority of them said voice or video. When I asked my students how nervous they were the first time they left a voice or video comment, I learned that they were quite nervous. After a few attempts, however, and including that icebreaker where everybody participated in that method, things shifted and the nerves got a lot better. I began to see that the voice and video comments were doing a lot more than increasing my presence in my students' learning and building community amongst their peers. They were also changing the way that they learned. 82% of my students strongly agreed or agreed that when they spoke, they remembered more of the information than when they wrote it. One student said, I felt the need to more fully research the material. I wanted to sound proficient. This was a theme that emerged too in the student comments. Speaking seemed to hold them more accountable for their work. Another student said, it made me more conscious of what I was saying, which helped me understand it more. And it feels more personal and intimate. And I think it helps you retain what you're learning. I learned a lot from this experience. One thing I learned is that different types of learning environments privilege certain people and leave other people out. And that's the benefit of using variety in our teaching and learning environments. It makes it more inclusive for everybody. The other thing I learned is to recognize that just because something doesn't work the first time doesn't mean I should throw it away. If you want to try something in your teaching and it, it's just not working, that, that means that you need to take a step back and invite your students into the conversation and ask them about how it's going and start to probe for different types of knowledge. You will learn so much and what you learn will help guide your teaching 
And when you keep your students at the center of your teaching, you're always moving in the right direction. But what's your takeaway? that the learning environment, text-based dis- 